Welcome to Porphyry Island. My name is Ben. I'm Emily. And I'm Tazzy. Let's, Let's go, go for a tour. Here. Emily, Tazzy, and I are summer staff and we work alongside volunteers here. And this is the boathouse where we welcome most of our visitors to the island. This lighthouse is the flagship site of the Canadian Lighthouses of Lake Superior, which is a non-profit charity whose focus is to preserve, protect, and promote these historic landmarks. We get all kinds of visitors here, from sailboats to motorboats, charter boats, kayakers, and some even fly in by helicopter. So what is it like to live at a lighthouse? One of the big adjustments is adapting to island resources. While we have very little electricity, we do have wild berries, and while we have no hot showers, we get to swim in the biggest freshwater lake in the world. Groceries and supplies come once a week from the city, and all of our water comes directly from the lake. Because of this, we have to be very aware of how we use our resources. The work that we do today is an homage to how things were then. And the whole reason that we're here is to preserve the history of this island and of this very structure. Porphyry Island has been a fundamental part of transportation history in the area, beginning with the First Nations on the North Shore, and has been integral as a lighthouse since 1873. So behind me here is a major commercial route connecting the resources of central Canada through the port of Thunder Bay to markets around the world. Porphyry light flashes every 11 seconds, and even with modern GPS technology and navigation aids, it remains essential. It lets ships know where we are, where they are, and where they can safely go. But in 1989, technology did replace light keepers. This building and its history could have been lost if it weren't for the efforts of CLLS. One of the first families to call Porphyry home was the Dick family. Andrew Dick and his wife and his 10 children lived here for 30 years, year round, and his diaries and family cemetery remind us of the importance of preserving this piece of local history. Porphyry Island is unique habitat for wildlife as well as light keepers. Today, it serves as a nature reserve, with most of the island being provincial park. Moose and deer swim over to feed on the old man's beard, the lichen hanging from these trees, and bears occasionally swim over here as well. The berries here ripen after those on the mainland have been exhausted because the island is kept cold by Lake Superior. So cold that in fact the point is arctic disjunct, which means that we can find plants there like encrusted saxifrage, which are found in few other places this far south. The point also offers sanctuary to birds passing by. Living on an island has taught us many skills specific to our environment here. We have learned how to use radios, operate a boat, and manage the food supply for the island community. Skills we learn here are also often transferable to living on the mainland. Alongside radio operation, we have learned about emergency preparedness, using power tools, and communication skills. We also share our experiences and the things we've learned here with the outside world and visitors using social media. At the end of the day, CLLS staff and visitors come together as a family for meals and recreation. Island living is community living, and we often enjoy campfires, reading by candlelight, board games, and swimming in the lake. And once you're in, the water really isn't that cold. <laughs> 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 <laughs>